Prince is a false God. There can only be one only true God. Now, I'll explain the problem that you have when you read the Bible. Okay. There's something, have you heard of a, a term called lexical ambiguity? It's when you read a sentence and a word in that sentence or that, that sentence itself could mean more than one thing. Yeah? And you need extra information to understand what that sentence is actually saying. Okay? So, in your Bible, it says, I and the Father are one. Is this sentence a lexical ambiguity or is it, is it explicit? When he's saying, I am and the Father is one, is one No, no, no. So what I'm saying to you is this. Could I and the Father are one mean more than one thing? Because Could it mean different I am saying what I understand that Jesus is uh, God's word. No, no, you're preaching now. Stop. God's word. Just and focus on what I'm asking Jesus you. Jesus, God's word, no, no. Father, and no. God's word is not. Focus what I'm saying to you. Yes, sir. Don't preach. Focus on what I'm saying. I'm asking you a very specific question here. When Jesus says, I and the Father are one, could that statement mean more than one thing? The answer is yes. It could mean more than one thing. It could mean Jesus is saying, me and the Father are one entity. Yeah? Or it could be Jesus saying, me and the Father, what he says I say. We've got the same will. One in purpose. Yeah, purpose. The same purpose. So there's two ways to understand the sentence. Do you understand that? Right. Now, when it's because it's a lexical ambiguity, it could mean more than one thing. It means we need extra information to actually understand what it means. Yeah. When you look at the Greek word for one, the word used is Isis. Okay. In Greek, this word Isis only applies to purpose. It never refers to one entity. So the extra information. So the extra information that we've learned now is that when the Greek term Isis, Isis is used, yeah, God, I and the Father, Isis, when it's not Isis isn't Isis, right? Isis, which means one in Greek, when you see this Greek word used, it never refers to one entity. It always refers to one in purpose. How do we know this? Because when Jesus says to his disciples, you can be one with us, it's the same word. No, not one spirit, one purpose. Okay, that's what the word means. This is the first thing. Then we have the explicit statement of Jesus, the Father's the only true God. If the Father's the only true God, then using this extra information on this lexical ambiguity, where Jesus and I and the Father are one, we can now use this extra information to know Jesus is not here saying he is the same as the Father, in essence. He's not saying that. And that's how we understand when we come across a lexical ambiguity in text, right? The problem you have when you read a textual ambiguity, sorry, a lexical ambiguity, you're not reading it as that. You think it's an explicit statement based upon the Trinitarian glasses you're reading it through. A, a formula created 300 years later, you're, you're addressing everything in the New Testament through those glasses. And you need to stop. Right? You need to question for yourself, what does this actually mean? What is it actually saying? Because it doesn't make any sense. Why would Jesus here say, Father's the only true God, and now here Jesus is implying he is also God? A contradiction here. But when you read it properly and understand it with extra information, you'll realize Jesus is not saying that here. Do you understand? Does that make sense? That's not much what you are saying. This means, it what? again, it's not much saying you look from your perspective, I look no, 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 no. I'm not looking from my perspective. What I'm looking from is a honest perspective. Something is said, what could it mean? It could mean this, it could mean that. I'll give you an example that's not religious. If I give you a sentence, the murder weapon was found by the statue in the park. How could that sentence be understood? It could be understood that next to the statue in the park, they found the murder weapon. Or it could mean the statue found the murder weapon in the park. Yeah, it could mean both things. When we look at what it could mean, we realize it's not the statue finding the murder weapon. The statues are inanimate. They can't find things. Therefore, we go with the first one. 
So when you come across a lexical ambiguity and this sentence can mean more than one thing, you have to be honest. Forget your glasses of Trinitarianism and ask yourself, what do I, how do I understand this? And what could this mean? And why do I take this position rather than this position? So for example, using our, what we said, I and the Father are one. You take the stance, it means one in essence, where it could also mean one in purpose. Why do you choose one in essence? Why did they want to stone him? Why did they want to stone him if it means the other thing how did, that you're how insinuating? Did Jesus why, yeah, would yeah. The, why would they want to stone him? For blasphemy! They misunderstand. He's saying, I am who one. Who wants to stone him? Who wants huh? to stone him? The fake Jews. Who are the fake Jews? The fake Jews are those who don't believe in the prophets. Who are the fake Jews? Who, the, Jews? the Pharisees. The ones who don't believe it. Who the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who did not believe in Daniel. What's that? Yahya, Are you saying the Pharisees didn't believe in a Messiah? Ibrahim, all the prophets. Did the Pharisees believe in a Messiah? Did the Pharisees believe that the Messiah would come to bring no, rule no. and reign? Did yes, they, they believe, did. But they didn't okay, realize okay. that the, the Messiah would first of all come lowly on a donkey. One second. As it says in Zechariah, he will come lowly into Jerusalem. So he's the real Messiah. I'll say it again to you. So he must I'll come first of all and bring salvation. I'll say it again to you. Do you believe the Pharisees and the Sadducees were together or opposed to each other? Some of the Pharisees and Sadducees believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Which Sadducees did? Which ones? The only Irishman in the Bible. Okay, Nick Odemus. Okay, so here's your problem. Have you heard of Nick Odemus? Yes, of course. He, he came to me Pharisee. by night because so we were afraid. He was a Pharisee. Tell us, where did you come Nicodemus from? Nick Odemus was a Pharisee. And Jesus said, Yeshua, Yeshu said, Ibn Mariam, Yeshu al Messiah. Oh, I said it again to you. He said, unless you were born again you. by the Spirit of God, he said, you should I'll know this, you're a Pharisee. I'll say it again to you. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, not a Sadducee. I just said that. Wait, you said he was, I, said, I said, give me the name of a Sadducee that accepted Jesus, and you said Nicodemus, which is a Pharisee, not a Sadducee. The Sadducees were Sadducee because they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. That's no, the they were Sadducees, Sadducees. no, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Let's, yeah. let's, do you understand the point? They were, I, I, I do understand. I lived there for a couple of years, so I, I, I know, and I've studied so, the Bible, so, I, I, so I can read Hebrew and all that stuff. So I know the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Were the Sadducees against the idea of a Messiah or for the idea of a Messiah? Well, that's a no-brainer. Of course, they're, Jew they're Jews. They're looking for the Messiah, but they're looking for no, him to rule wrong. and reign. But you're first wrong. of all, he's going to come to rule and reign in your heart by defeating so death. So you're wrong. No, no, you're wrong. Because you're not you're facing wrong. the Messiah. You're not facing what, what did Yahya say? What did Yahya say? I'll tell you why you're you wrong. hold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I'll tell you why you're wrong. I'll tell you why you're wrong. Go on, then. Because the Sadducees were representatives of Rome. and the of what? Representatives of Rome in Judea. And the Sadducees and, and the Romans abolished Jewish monarchy. So anyone claiming to be the Messiah would be claiming Jewish kingship. And the, Far and the Sadducees um, were against this. Okay, the Pharisees were waiting for a Messiah. Now, I would go as far to say as Jesus. They were both, well, I would, I would agree to disagree well, agreeably on that. One why would you disagree? Because they were both looking for the, both looking for the Messiah. The Sadducees just were under not. different pretexts. The Sadducees but if you follow not. the prophets, which you should as well, the Sadducees and if you go by Yaku, so let's establish the Sadducees and, and Pharisees. You go by Yaku, let's just establish. You will see that the Messiah and Daniel, Daniel, let's just establish. then you realize that the Messiah has to come holy. The 30 pieces of silver he has to be principle. betrayed for. Let's just establish the principle. What about that prophecy? Let's just establish the principle. You can't face it, so you move on to something else. No, we're on the point you're trying to move on. You made the, you're I, avoiding you're what I just said. You're trying to paint the picture that the Sadducees and Pharisees were on the same page, and they weren't, right? Now, I'm going to say this to you. Paul, Paul, let, let's say, hey, 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 let's say, I'll, for example, you're right. I'll say it again. No, and that the Sadducees, well, I'm agreeing with you. Hang on. Let's say, well, for example, hypothetically, you're right, and they weren't looking for the Messiah. What were they looking for, the Sadducees? Okay, the Sadducees, all they cared about was ruling the temple, running the temple, leaders of the temple, and being, uh, so whoever occupied Judea, they represented, yeah? They were, they were whoever's bitch. So if the Greeks occupied Judea, whoever's bitch. Yeah. So basically, they did what their colonial masters told them. Yeah. They, they were, were selected. Dodgy and the Pharisees they, they were because they weren't following the prophets. So the, so the Pharisees the, and Yeshua, no, no. Yes, who said you've okay, got to get second, back to the prophets second, who are following the traditions of man. See, see, I'll tell you he why. said you snakes, you I'll, vipers, see, and he called see, the Pharisees I'll, I'll point and the Sadducees out to you, snakes and vipers. I'll point out to you that how that doesn't make any sense in your New Testament. It doesn't make any sense that the Messiah would call out the faith as he's a prophet. What do prophets do? Remind they me, call out the faith. Remind me That's something. What they do. Remind me something Jesus taught that the Pharisees were against. He's the Messiah. They were waiting for a Messiah. Remind they me what they believe that he is the Messiah. Okay. Messiah. Why did why did 
the, and he did the miracle. Once as, as a Jewish Messiah, so are you he say, had to do okay. four key things. Okay. One of them was doing various things. They were waiting for it. Were, why, what do you they think? They denied it. They said, you're doing it by demons. You're doing these miracles no, 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 by no, demons. I'll say it again. They, I'll, I'll tell you what Pharisees makes sense. had the demons. I'll tell you what doesn't make any Jesus. sense. Yeshua said, your father the devil. You can, you can you're making preaching. people suffer. No, preaching. you should have. Let's deal with history. You don't, you don't, history. You don't believe that? I'm telling you. I'm telling you for a fact. And you go away and research what I'm telling you. The About the Sadducees. The Pharisees, okay, no, no, okay. no, please listen. If you listen, you learn and you can go away and research. I'll learn from you. Okay, well, are you, do you know everything? I didn't say I know everything. But I know things but you I, don't? I know more about the Pharisees and Sadducees than you. Okay, remind me, according to the Pharisees, was it wrong to heal on the Sabbath? Well, according to their silly, silly man-made traditions, when Yeshua pointed out, it's wrong. Of course you can heal. He gave an example. If your mule falls into what a hole, question? you would help it. What was my question? You would do a What was my question? question? No, you're not. I am, because on the Sabbath, no. you've got to do I'll, what I'll helps people. Question. And if it's a miracle, yes. I'll repeat According my question. to the traditions, going I'll literally repeat my by question. the law. I'll repeat my question. Address my question. I just, I just, it was a very simple, straightforward question. Did the Pharisees have a problem with Jesus healing on the Sabbath? Jesus Why? Why? Because they were following the traditions of man, and they should see the the spirit of the of, of the law, the heart. This is why he brought it back to the heart. Right. And they didn't like the heart. They liked all the the formal so, traditions so, so, and all so, so, the, just read between the, the ceremonial so, law the and plus the traditions of man. To read, and they twisted it. To read That's why he called them a bunch of saints. To read between your preaching. To read between. He, your he preaching. won't answer. Okay. He'll move on no, to. No, 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 no. We're on the same point. And to read between your preaching, you're no, saying. You're preaching. You're saying. I'm not preaching anything. You're saying that the Pharisees did have a problem with healing on the Sabbath. That's what you're saying, yes? Oh, do you want me to say it again? Or yes. What, is this a puppet? Yeah, because it was a Pharisee teaching. It was a Pharisee teaching, and this is why I'm trying to educate you and you can go away and learn. Uh, yeah? I'm going to go away, <laughs> and I'm going to learn from you about the Pharisees. Well, you're not learning from me. You're learning from knowledge that I picked up that maybe you've not heard. From what? The Hadith? Nothing to do with Islam. Nothing to do with Islam. Nothing to do with Islam. Nothing to do with, do with the Hadith. No. Where did you get your info from about the Sadducees? Uh, High of Maccabee. Who? High of Maccabee. The Jews. Oh, the Maccabees. Okay, the Maccabees. No, not the Maccabees. His name's High of Maccabee. He was a I rabbi. Am. Oh, he was a rabbi? Yes. How many years after Yeshua? Oh, this was recent. He died... Um, oh, well, people, people are saying all sorts of shish so kebab about is Yeshua, aren't they? The point they? is this. They come out are, you huh? are, you, are you a historian? Are you Are you a historian? Well... No, I'm not. I have Maccabee is. I know you very well. Right, so Can I'm we not. come back to the discussion yeah, of the lady? Yeah. Remember, yes. the gentleman Sorry. here raised an objection saying, you know, why would the Jewish people, Pharisees, Sadducees, why would they stone him if he didn't claim to be God? But what we want to understand, the context of all of this is, what was the response of Jesus Christ then? Yes. When they tried to stone him, because he's supposedly making blasphemy, we want to know what Christ said. Did he say, of course I'm God, that's not a blasphemy, or did he actually respond in a way to remove himself from any accusations of blasphemy? When we read the New Testament, we see that he says, that. I, I am answering. Good question. Because you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. Answer, so, at one point he says, can I answer the question? Excuse me. The question. Rather than excuse me. Uh, the lady. lady. Did, you, did you just notice what's happening? This gentleman came up with the objection, why did they want to stone him? And what am I doing? I am answering the question and he wants to answer himself. Let me answer. From the text, Jesus even said, okay, isn't it written in your law? So what, yeah, yeah. So he even asked them, why are, you, why are you stoning me for what good works? He says, no, not because of the good works, but because but you as a mere man, you're claiming to me, God, you're blaspheming. I'm paraphrasing. Then he responded. How did he respond? He didn't simply say, of course I'm God. That's not a blasphemy because I should say I'm God because I'm God. And I can tell God, why he didn't excuse me, excuse me, let me finish. Well, Patiently me. listen because well, you are interrupting me. I'm not get preaching, I am answering. I'm answering. So, I cannot. Minutes, 10 minutes, 30 listen, seconds. listen. First of all, first of all, you were not in the discussion. I was having well, I a very corner. good discussion with the ladies. He comes and interrupts. Whatever you like, and then you like. he doesn't want people Just to so speak. You know this. But so, you understand, this is not the Bible where right. women are this not allowed to speak. Right. Okay. 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 Okay.
Yeah. Right. So just to continue with them, thank you. Now to, to continue. Jesus Christ is responding. He is saying that, look, is it not written in your law? Meaning what? He is referring them back to their own scripture. And what does it say? He says that you are God's Elohim, sons of the Most High. And this scripture cannot be broken. And I only said, I am Ben Elyon, I'm the son of God. So he now responded to this accusation. What was his response? Did he say, did he say, did he say, let me finish. Did he say, I'm God? No, he didn't. So he didn't say, I'm God. Instead, he was saying, even in the Old Testament, God himself addresses the Pharisees up in knots using the, 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 the word of God. Have some manners and let me complete my statement. Let me, let me, let me complete my statement. I am not preaching, I'm just simply informing you what's in the New Testament. He had to die on a cross. So what happened is this. He's I saying am the Son of God don't to a bunch of Pharisees, so he used the word of God. Why is he so afraid clever. to listen to the answer? Ah, you Do you see the inferiority complex? Okay. No, 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 I'm not preaching. I'm just simply informing you. Okay, in fact, madam, may I ask you the same question? Now, tell me, what was Jesus' response? From the Bible. From the Bible. If you don't know, I can tell you. Well, I just told you the answer. Me what was his response? If you know more than you know me. No, no, I'm asking you, do you know? That he is son of No, do you know what was his response in, in relation to the accusation they've made? He responded to the accusation. Do you know his response, what it was? Okay, so let me remind you, you again. Gonna, you just, no, 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 so he, he said... He's going to say the same thing again. Do you, do you, said it, do you see that? He's carry on I gave you the opportunity to tell me what his response the was. And he talked over me because because you are not... He informing me, cross, I'm going to inform him. everyone. He but them. you no, realize again, he is interrupting because he doesn't want people to hear. They're using you to preach. He doesn't want. Let him go. That's fine. Let him go. So now, that's fine, madam. Let him go. That's okay. So now we realize his response is that look, if you look at your scripture, which is the Old Testament, if you go into Psalms. 86 in which God addresses the judges that you are God's Elohim you are the sons of the Most High but you'll die like men that's how it goes like this Psalms 86 what is Jesus doing here is that God addresses human judges as God's Elohim imagine I am one of those judge and I said I am Elohim I'm God would that be blasphemy? According to the scripture, no, that would not be blasphemy because God has already labeled them as gods. Jesus says, even though anyone who claims to be God is not a blasphemy, according to this, he didn't say I am Elohim. He says, I am Ben Elyon, I'm the son of God. So he even says something lesser. Even if he said I am God, that would not be blasphemy because God addressed some people can be called Elohim and it not, does not count as blasphemy. So Jesus first, he removed the accusation by saying, I did not claim to be God, but I only claim to be the Son of God. What is the term Son of God mean? Does that amount to blasphemy? The answer is no. Because Jesus himself clarifies that there are lots of sons of God. God himself says there's lots of sons of God. Adam is the Son of God. David is the Son of God. Ephraim isn't even the first one. So according to the language, the phrase Son of God in the Old or the New Testament, it doesn't mean anyone to be God. It simply means someone is a righteous person. In hearing this response, were they able to stone him and say, oh no, you blaspheme? They couldn't. They couldn't get a good counter response anyway. So Jesus refuted them from the accusation that Jesus is claiming to be God and blasphemy. So now let's return back to what we said earlier. Who did he identify the true, true God is? He did not say it's me or us. He says, who, sh who you should worship? The one who's in heaven. He even said, or oh, our 
Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. So who is, who is he saying that you should worship, you should pray to? The one who is in heaven, not one who is on earth. And he says, the only true God is you, the Father. And there's two more explicit. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. There's two. There's three explicit statements of Jesus that says he's not God. Of Jesus. So Jesus says to Mary, "Go tell my disciples. I go now to my Father and your Father, my God and your God." Okay. So at this point, Jesus is saying what? He's going to his Father, who is our Father. So we've got the same Father. His God, our God. Wait a minute, what's Jesus saying? So Jesus is saying now that he's ascending to God, the Father. He's already told us the Father is the only true God. And when Jesus is said, oh, in the, I think it's in Matthew, it says, the, the young man says, oh, good teacher. What does he say? Why well, say I'm good? Only God is good. So we have three explicit statements of Jesus where he's differentiating himself from God. Where he's explicitly saying, the Father is the only true God. I go now to God. And why call him me good? Only God is good. Yeah? So these are what we call explicit statements. And going back to what I was saying earlier. So when you hear, before Abraham was, I am. Yeah? So this is another lexical ambiguity. Because it could mean more than one thing. It could mean, I am before Abraham. I, mean, I existed before Abraham. It could mean that. Or it could mean, I am is the name of God, apparently. So when he's being asked, how do you know these things? And he basically says, before Abraham was God. And he's basically saying, I'm, I'm a messenger of God. So God would know these things. And I'm conveying these things God has told me to convey. So there's different ways of understanding the same verse. Now, is it he's saying he's God? Or is it him saying God told him? So these are the two ways you can understand this sentence. When you apply lexical ambiguity, we look for extra information. When we see Jesus saying the Father is only true God, that means Jesus, again, he's saying he's not God. So he can't be referring to the idea that he's God, so he must be saying he's a messenger of God at this point. You've got to start, when you read the Bible, you've got to recognize ambiguous statements that may mean more than one thing. And I'll tell you where this information for me has come from. I've uh, been researching Unitarian Christians. These are Christians who don't believe in the idea that Jesus was God. Don't believe in the idea of a Trinity. And they show me the same verses that a Trinitarian Christian would use to support the idea that Jesus is God. So they'll bring I and the Father I want as an evidence. And this Unitarian Christian say, well, actually, no, it means this. Uh, they'll show me before Abraham was I am. And then this Unitarian Christian will show me what it actually means this. But you've got two choices. Now, this is not coming from an Islamic perspective, anything like that. It's from a human perspective. You're reading the language. You're seeing a sentence that could mean more than one thing. You have to put your bias aside and ask yourself, what could this mean? Because what's happening is you're coming across an ambiguous statement and the interpretation of that ambiguous statement goes against explicit statements and you're building theology upon this. And this is disaster. Disastrous. Just, just, you know, to, the problem is, just another a point. I've been for 39 years. The problem is that the Christ, when Jesus Christ, everything that Jesus Christ says in the Bible, if you follow that, it, Jesus Christ, the statements of Jesus Christ is 100% correct. But what the Christians, as a Christian, we tend to follow, uh, when I was a Christian, we tend to follow what Paul said or what the Muslim we haven't, and John we said. Haven't, we haven't brought Paul to the table. Yeah, I know, I know, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what we anyway, tend to do. We tend to follow just stay on the one point. Yeah, just, yeah. just want to understand something else. Because these are. Do you believe that there is life after life? Yes, we Muslims believe there is life after death. Do you believe that we are free? We have the body, soul, and spirit? Do you believe that? Um, body and soul. Afterwards, we are body and soul. The Bible says what we are talking about is spiritual things. No part of the mind never is there anything that we discussed that requires to understand spiritual things? Yes, because you what? are considering everyone comes from their perspective and their interpretation. And our upbringing is okay. there and our So let me, let, me, let me try to understand one thing. If God says... If, I can get it. So are you orthodox or Catholic? No, no. Huh? That's okay. No, no, what, is, what, is, what is that? 
what, 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 what is your denomination of Christianity in Hungary? You said Protestant. Yeah, they are Protestant. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. If God, I'm going to. No, no, but you said I'm an Englishman. When I brought up in this culture, we're, we're, we're Church of England. Yeah? It doesn't matter. Because just because I'm born somewhere doesn't make that religion true. Yeah? It doesn't. Geographical locations can't be used. Your foundation is based on so many different things which are part of this. No. Okay, let me, let me address no. this point, right, very quickly. If God says, God is one God, now, are we going to use our interpretation to say, actually, one doesn't mean one here, it means five? Or is it quite explicit? Do you know that Elohim is not one? No. Elohim, if God says he is one, how many Moses was there? Moses is called Elohim. Elohim. Moses is called Elohim. The devil is called Elohim. How many devils are there? How many devils are there? Your Bible. Bible. Okay. You, you can look this up. But anyway, let's understand something. Does God say he is one God? Okay, I'll bring it up. Does God say he is one God? Does God say he is one God? Okay. Is Jesus that one God? Okay. Elohim. The same I, I said to you, uh, because this is my flesh. Mm -hmm. But we, we all know that when we die, this goes to the ground. Yeah. But we will still live. Why? If our, my flesh is dead. Okay. So there must be another thing. Okay. Is that part of What I don't follow is this. To you, God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together they make how many gods? Good. So you believe one God, um, I, that's why I'm asking you to tell me. One God is Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Together they make one God, right? Good. Individually, how much of God is the Father? Because God is when they're together. But individually, is he one third God? Is your flesh one thing and your thoughts a second? Sorry? Part. So is the Father part of God? Is the Father part of God? Is the Son part of God? Is the Holy Spirit part of God? So you've made God into parts. How much part is he? One third? 33.33%? More, less, equal? Let me ask you again. Is the Father, just to clarify, is the Father 100% God or is he one third God? This is not a spiritual thing anymore. We're not talking about spirituality. We're talking about reality. When you say God is the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, together they're one God, that means individually they cannot be that one God. They're part of that one God. How much part of it? They cannot be equal because the whole is always greater than the parts. So if the Father is part of God, then he's not 100% God. He's less than God. If he's equal to the whole, then there are three gods, not one god. So I'm, ask, I'm going to ask you again. Is the Father 100% God or less than 100% God? 100%. If he's 100% God, is he same as the Trinity, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit? Or less or more, being 100% God? Do you see what the problem is? Now, you because you are trying to understand this from your carnal mind. No, no. I'm trying to understand from common sense. Do you have common sense? Of course you do. We all have common sense. Wait, wait. According to no, no. According to common sense, would you take this tripod as God? The Bible doesn't talk about tripods, so you can't say the Bible doesn't say anything about it. Would you say this is God in any way, shape, or form? You would say no. Why do you say it's not God? The Bible doesn't talk about tripods. What are you using? What are you using other than the Bible which doesn't talk about tripods that this is not God? Tell me. You are using something and I want to establish what that is and I'm going to use that thing. So what are you using to say this tripod is not God? It's not the scripture. For sure, Bible for sure doesn't talk about tripods. So you're using common sense, logic, reason, rationality, intellect. If you use those things, when it comes to the tripod, 
when it comes to God, whether he's a tree or a tripod or a man or a woman, use your intellect. Because God gave us our intellect for a reason. Because you are on the earth and until you are having your flesh, you need to, all the laws in the earth are um, having impact on you and your life is impacted by you. Yeah. But do you understand my argument? I we are using common sense logic. So logic tells us that God has to be most perfect. He has to be independent. He has to be self-sufficient. Okay, so this is Exodus 7. Then the Lord said, no, this is obviously the English. The Hebrew is Elohim. And the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you like God to Pharaoh. And in the Hebrew it says Elohim. Now, is Moses plural or singular? Do you know your Bible? Do you want to show the no, Hebrew in Tanania? Yeah, you we also, me, so forgive me, which yeah. Bible do you read? I read uh, E-A-G. What? E-A-G. King James. King James. KJV. KJV and bring the interlinear Hebrew. So while you're doing this, my sister right, in so humanity. The KJV. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Hebrew. All right. Yeah. You want that in Hebrew? Yeah. Okay. Hebrew. So as we're speaking, when we say God, God is the most perfect being. He is one without any imperfections and deficiencies. Do you agree? God is not deficient. Can you read Hebrew? He's perfect. Can you read Hebrew? Not this God Hebrew. One of the perfect well, which one? I'm giving you I'm giving Hebrew. You want Hebrew or not? If you get intermediate transliterated Hebrew, that will help. Yes. In, from Bible Hub. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, what we are saying, God is the most perfect. He is not deficient. He is not imperfect. That means he has to be self sufficient. Be becoming, being dependent is a weakness, is a deficiency. Is Jesus dependent or independent? He is dependent. Any being who is dependent cannot be God. Because God is the only being who is self-sufficient and independent. Jesus is eternally dependent on the Father. So he can never be God. He's eternally not God. Because God is a being who is self-sufficient. Jesus is not self-sufficient. He is dependent on the Father for his own life, for his existence. So any being who is dependent on the Father, on God, is not God. I don't have to go to any scripture, find out any scripture. Common sense. Because God is self-sufficient. Jesus is not. We are all not self-sufficient. Everything in the creation that you can see are dependent, including Jesus. So none of us can be God. The only being who we can say truly is God is the one who is independent and self-sufficient, and that is God alone. And that is something that Jesus identified to be the Father. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. So this is in a, this is seven one, yeah? yeah. Yeah. Yahweh so said, see Moses to, to God Elohim. Moses, yeah. If you make this, so Moses, Elohim is used for Moses. Can you see the interlinear Hebrew transliterated as Elohim? Which is translated as God about Moses. Moses is not more than one, is it? Because you made a yes. No, no, you made it. No, as yeah, 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 yeah. God. But you said Elohim. No, 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 but you said when the word Elohim is used, it's always more than one. That's what you said. And Elohim is used for Moses. And he's only one, not more than one. They are disbelievers, atheists. Okay, so you therefore have... your understanding of the word Elohim is incorrect. Yeah. But you see, now only you accept that. that Good. So you learn something we have, yeah. you are proving when there is only one God. We are yeah. proving that, that it is not Jesus Christ. And we, we are also saying one God, but we believe in three... No, but persons. that's the problem. No, it's been this problem for you. No, that, not, I, I, no, but it's not problem for us. It is. But why is painful for you what we believe? No, no, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's painful for us. Because <laughs> you only believe what you believe because of where you were born. Okay. This is not something that you have come to the conclusion yourself. This is just how you were brought up, you believe it's true, and you're living it because you think it's true. That doesn't make it true. We are believing something alternate to you. Okay. Our beliefs can't both be true. Now we care about truth. You should care about truth also. Both of our beliefs cannot be true. 
porn star. What yeah, star? we've got a problem. That's in our beliefs. Beliefs. Not all beliefs. There's no religion that can be reconciled. So all religions, yeah, but only one there can was, be true, or they're all false. Yeah, there's no two religions that can be true because each contradicts another. Uh, we and we can't have Adam square triangles. So you can't have Jesus being God and then a religion saying Jesus isn't God. Oh, do you know that part of the One of them is wrong. Agreed? Yeah. How can you do that? Basic principle. So, for example, you, it's been, yeah. Back. Now, yes. now yeah, is just situation. Then you try to prove your truth no, no. to us. No, And we're standing. We're not trying. We, we are, are not trying to prove anything to you. We're not inviting you to Islam right now. What we're doing is asking you what you believe and why. Now, your beliefs. So, your conclusion to what you believe, your premises don't support it. Your reasons why you believe and don't make sense. Yeah. So if, if you believe Jesus is one part of a co-equal trinity, yet Jesus himself says in your scripture that the Father is the only true God, that means there can only be one true God, which is the Father. What we're asking you as a Christian, when you read that explicit statement, why are you ignoring it? Why are you ignoring that and going to a statement, I am the Father that I won before Abraham was I am, which is, like I said earlier, a lexical ambiguity. Why are you going to ambiguous verses that could mean more than one thing and selecting the, not you selecting it, but following the interpretation that suits your narrative, yeah? You've got to be honest. You've got to say, well, this can't mean what they're saying it means. And if it doesn't mean this, what does it mean? And what else have I reading thinking it means such a thing when it doesn't. So for example, the young lady here, she thought when she sees Elohim, it only applies to God and it always means more than one. Therefore, God is more than one, comprised of more than one. She's learned today that Moses is referred to as Elohim and Moses is only one guy. Therefore, it doesn't always apply to that. So it's something new you learn. And what happens in life when you learn new things, you apply it, yeah? You can't just stay blinkered, yeah? And alhamdulillah, you're good people. You're really good people. And you know, there's a reason why you're here today. Yeah, you're not, look, 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 do you know the people, how many people we speak to here who are obnoxious, Six who, who are horrible to speak to? Honestly, and I can see you've got manners, you're courteous, I can see your thinking, and I like the way you question, show me. I like that. This, this is what we call reasoning. But when you reason and you see a conclusion, you say, I was wrong. And once you're wrong about something, you have to ask a simple question. You think this is the be, morning? The Maybe I this is God's sign. Said, I see you stood here at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Maybe this is a sign from God that you interact with Muslims and you learn about things maybe that something you erroneously believe because of culture, because of your upbringing. Yeah, you know the thing this is, could be a sign from God. Do you know what's amazing? I seen you at 11 o'clock today. Yeah, I seen you. I look, should I speak to her? Um, I was like, really? feels a little bit cold. I'm going, I'm going like, Adam 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 chat. It felt really cold. Now we were there without cameras and there's nobody here. And what do we do? And look at the end of the, like, the, end so of the day, I was nearly gone. We got a chance like to speak to you. So I was meant to speak to you, even though it didn't happen earlier. Yeah. Martial arts happened now. But you've got to reflect upon this. You've got to think about what's been said to you. Forget we're Muslims. Because what we've said to you today has got nothing to do with Islam. We've not brought to you the Quran or the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said about the Bible. We've not mentioned nothing like this. All we're asking you as Christians to do is you're holding a position which isn't tenable. Yeah? You can't hold the position Jesus is God if Jesus says he isn't. If Jesus is the Father is the only true God. Adam comes from the But understand one thing, and this is the warning. This is just the beginning. Once you start pulling the string, we'll all unravel. Really will. And you 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 will end up walking away from Christianity. I'm not saying you become a Muslim or anything like that. You will walk away from this. This can't be true. Because and then when, like, for example, alive, you read the KJV, yes? why? Why is that the Bible you holy read? The holy ones, Don't you know it contains forgery? The, the, the holy ones were Literally in, forgery? Verses that are not found in the early manuscripts that have been added later on? You, are you aware of this or not? I know one thing. What do you know? That God changed my life. Alhamdulillah. But guess what? Can you say God changing your life means what you believe is true? Because God changed my life. Oh, but here's the thing. Alhamdulillah. So here's the thing you see. You saying an evidence for you, God changing your life, means Christianity is true. Fair enough? Right. I'm a Muslim. I've been a Muslim 21 years. I accepted Islam when I was 27. Islam changed my life. Does that make it true? No, no, no. I'm not interested in relative truth. I'm interested in ultimate truth. Because the answer has to be from you, no. Because if my truth is true, yours is false. 
if your truth is true, mine is false. One of us hasn't got the truth here. And yet, both of our lives have been changed because of our truths. Yeah? So, using you, oh, it changed my life, doesn't prove anything. It cannot be used as a criterion to determine what truth is. The only way you can determine what truth is, is what do I believe and why? Rather than just accepting what you're being told, question what you're being told. Who told me this? Why is this? You know, start asking these questions. Why, why does this Bible have verses that have been removed from this Bible? Why? Isn't it all the word of God? What happened? I'm going to ask you three questions, right? And I guarantee you're pretty much you're going to say yes to three of them. Right, let's see. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels were inspired by God? Authors of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Do you believe they were inspired by God? Yes. Yes. What do you say? Yes. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, was written by disciples of Jesus? Not all of them. Which ones weren't? Do you agree? Uh, sorry? Why not? That's okay. okay. Which ones are not? Who? Mark and Luke. There was no disciples called Mark and Luke. The problem you have is Matthew copied from Mark. So if Mark's not a disciple of Jesus, why would Matthew be a disciple of Jesus copying from Mark? Doesn't make no sense. But you believe that they were Matthew and John, yeah? That they were they were disciples of Jesus. And do you believe that the authors of these gospels were eyewitnesses to what they wrote? Of course you do. So you've pretty much answered yes, 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 like I, I believed you would. Now this is what this is this, these are your premises to support your conclusion. So if what you're saying is true, it will make total sense to believe it. What well, these guys, Jesus chose to walk with him. These guys witnessed the life of Jesus, witnessed his miracles, witnessed his parables, heard the explanations to his parables, were there on the day of Pentecost filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow, yeah, yeah. And the Holy Spirit inspired them to write and correct them if they made, made any mistakes. Yeah, of course I believe what it says. I agree. That, that would give you a uh, justified reason to believe what the New Testament, what the Gospels say. Yeah, fair? The problem you have is, there's no support for the idea that the authors of the Gospels were inspired by the Holy Spirit. None of the writers of the Gospels made such a claim. That's a claim put upon them by other people. They didn't make the claim, first thing. Second thing, according to biblical scholars, the authors of the Gospels are anonymous. You don't even know who wrote them. This is biblical scholars, yeah? Your biblical scholars, New Testament scholars. You don't know who authored Mark, who authored Matthew, who authored Luke, who authored John. You don't actually know who they were. And if you don't know who wrote something, you certainly can't say they were eyewitnesses. But you don't know who they were. So the problem you have is the three premises that hold up your reliance of the New Testament are actually false premises when you actually look at them. And when you realize that, so what I'm reading here now isn't written by people who witnessed it, isn't written by people who claim to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Why do I believe it's true? question you need to ask yourself. You see, because as my friend, there is spiritual mind and there is flesh. If we born again and we see with the spiritual mind, we see with the weakness of man, we need to be born with the Holy Spirit. And for you, fair enough. I'm going to make a claim to you now. No, no, it's not, not for you to Why do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Because it's silly. When have you ever seen it in action? Give me an example of the Holy Spirit doing its work. Where? 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 Is the Holy Spirit with the Catholics or the or with the Protestants? No, we know you're not Catholics. So, so who, who is the Holy Spirit with? With the Catholics or the Protestants or the Orthodox or the, the Egyptian Copts? Right. No worries. We have to go as well and pray Maghrib. Oh, okay. Well, just, let me just leave you with that to think about, please. And promise me to do so. Can I say one more? Go on. Yes. If you look around and you see what is going on in the world, madness will happen. And if we come back here, like let's say 10, 20 years, it's only that power.
Okay. Yeah, I, I, I I'm going to make the point to you now. Okay. And now the thing which makes you feel like so I know somehow it can go into seconds and then you are just like that. I'll say it again to you. The evidence on the New Testament, the evidence from Christianity, there is no Holy Spirit. It doesn't do what it says on the tin. The Holy Spirit is supposed to lead you into all truth and the Holy Spirit is supposed to guide you and correct you. The Holy Spirit doesn't correct the Gospel writers. The Holy Spirit doesn't correct Paul and the disciples who's right and who's wrong. The denomination of Christianity, like my brother said to you, Catholics, have they got the Holy Spirit? Protestants, have they got it? Jehovah's Witnesses, have they got it? Who's got it? You can't all have it because you believe different things. So who has the Holy Spirit? And the problem you have is, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you have different Bibles. Which one, which one has the Holy Spirit? The Church Fathers, did they have the Holy Spirit? Because the problem is this, the Holy Spirit is supposed to, the Holy Spirit is supposed to do a job. Yeah? Correct, harmonize, lead you into truth. And all you see in Christianity is division and confusion. Nobody knows what's true and what's not. Unitarian Christians challenge Trinitarian Christians on verses of the Bible. They don't even agree on that. Where's the Holy Spirit in all this? Why is he not doing his job? Why, when there's historical errors made in the New Testament, in the Gospels, why is the Holy Spirit not correcting the author? Why is he allowing the mistakes to continue? Why is he allowing the fabrications to occur? What's up, what's, the Holy Spirit is doing nothing. So either the Holy Spirit is redundant, or it doesn't exist. Now, I'm saying to you, I'm not saying absence of evidence and evidence of absence, but if the Holy Spirit existed, we should see it in action. Now, here's the thing I do see. I see Christians here, writing, raving, singing, dancing, acting manic. And they claim that's the Holy Spirit. There's nothing holy about it. When I see these churches and they're all on a weapon, that doesn't look very holy to me. Right, right, right. But this is the, but people claim this is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit come down, right? And so this is the thing. You're, you're, you're trying to live reality based on things you've been taught, but don't support it. And you have what's called the placebo effect, where because you think something's true, you see something and you, oh, it could be that, yeah? All I want you to do, is listen to the claim I've made. There's one claim all you need to challenge today. Go away, where are you going? What that crazy guy said in the park. Is it true the authors of the Gospels were anonymous? Is it true they were not eyewitnesses to what they wrote? Is it true there was no claim of divine inspiration? And if it's true, and if it's true, and if it's true, why do I believe it? Check out my channel. Can I give you my channel name? Our YouTube channel. Yeah, have you got a paper? You look like you've got a pen and paper. Yeah. Oh, come on. You are not um, How can I do it? Have you got like a notepad on your phone or something? I'm not trying to get your number or anything like that. Because I want you to respond. Oh, no, I really do. I want you both to respond to what I've said to you. Because we're trying to establish what's true here. You see, we'll meet course, again, and you've got the Quran. Read it. No, no, see what it has to say about you. Yeah, yeah. Read the Quran. And you see, I'll tell you what I'll do. With you, I need to Shall I write it in the Quran? Where's the Quran? 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 I need to know. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when you are talking, it means I can, I can tell what is written in the Bible. Yeah. So we can talk about it. So read the Quran, get some questions, and 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 come back to us. I apologize for that Christian interjecting earlier because that was very rude. The way he was sharing. You see, we started to talk very, very in silence, and all of you came and you just I tried did, I to didn't push. Shout, did I? No. Yeah, you, you raised voices. So no, it's not like this. Yes, yes, him, yes, 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 yes. And it means everyone. I'll put my like, email as well. Yeah. And you see, what is interesting that we came with the same opinion and we're living with the same opinion. No, you know. Because we already found. No, you know. Which is true. Yeah, yeah. She's changed her opinion. Does Elohim mean always in plural? No, it doesn't. But most of them are But that doesn't change the, uh, the fact that you see in the UN. Well, it doesn't because more, was Moses more than one. No, was Moses more than one? I think what you should do is reflect on what we've said, just try to recollect what we've said in terms of the scripture verses that you've used and the counter responses that we've provided. I can tell you that I am not ready to respond to your questions. I know, I know. But that doesn't change my experience. Have an open mind, have an open mind. Yes. And see, because when you believe in Islam, one thing for sure will happen to you. You will get contentment and tranquility in the hearts. Because the Quran says so. 
Ala bi dhikrillahi taqwa inna al-qulub. Do not the hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of God, in the remembrance of Allah. This is one thing you'll notice. When you accept Islam, you, your experience will such that you'll have tranquility, peace, serenity. You'll have, you have, you have all of that. Because at, the, at this minute, because at this minute, what you have heard is Jesus cannot be God, and you know it makes sense. Jesus cannot be God because he is not self-sufficient. Jesus cannot be God because he says the only Father is the only true God. So the peace that you had about Jesus is God is no longer there because now you are in a. Yeah. Is Jesus still God? What's your name? After all that we've spoken? So after all the reasons we've given you, you still think he's God? Very nice. Anyway, you're, all the rest, you take care. That's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak again. Take care. I want a response. Yeah. I want you to tell me why I'm wrong. Just reflect. And if you go to Hamza's den, I think probably have the video up. Yeah, yeah, we can we'll take the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out, yeah? Take care, ladies. Okay. Safe journey. Take care. Pleasure speaking to you both. Sorry,